Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. It's time to get the scoop with Sarah. Dr. Michelle Ross, I was on Big Brother 11 and a whole bunch of other shows as the first scientist to start on reality television. So right now I'm actually a cannabis scientist. I've written five books, including Vitamin Weed, and I'm actually starting a new mushroom company called Mushroom MD. Actually, I was a fan of the show since season one, and since I was in the medical field, I was such a huge fan of Dr. Will. Like, seriously, stars in my eyes. Like, I would have married him if he had asked. You know, like, I was a super fan. And it was sort of, you know, like, it would have been cool to go on, but, like, I never applied or anything. And then, actually, at the time, um, my first husband, I'm, I've been married twice, uh, had, was in Hollywood and he was trying to get on all these TV shows and everything. And like one day we had a fight and I was like, we can get on a T I could get on a TV show faster than you could. And I'm a scientist working at Caltech, like, and no joke. I literally applied to a Craigslist ad for scientists who want to be on TV. Totally weird. Cause there's never any posts like that ever. And I'm like, okay, da da da. Literally like five minutes later, I get a call and it's like, Hey, this is a, big brother do you know what that is would you be interested in this and I'm like literally drop the phone like fall over like like I almost like fainted like no joke I was like what are the chances and so of course I, they cast me because I'm the coolest scientist around um and literally uh the producer of big brother said that she had never put somebody so nerdy on tv before which by the way I don't consider myself like I'm a nerd but like not nerdy personality I'm not like oh my god push my glasses up I'm like my nose kind of nerd but like it was the opportunity, just the timing was right. Like I would have never said yes to that opportunity at any other point in my life. Like it was just the right time. I was like, I want to quit my job. I want to quit my like marriage. Like, let's just go crazy. I'm going to go do TV. And that's what happened. And literally I was cast like within a matter of weeks, whereas I know the whole process is really, really long for most people. So it was sort of just crazy. Sometimes life just throws you things that you don't expect. But the thing is, and I even had to actually tattoo this on my leg. Uh, I have this in French, live for the moment, because guess what? If you don't embrace those crazy moments, like every scientist in the world was like, you're insane for doing this. And I was like, well, this is a one in a lifetime like chance. You've got to go take it. And I'm so happy I did. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like, maybe it was going to be like an extra on like, I don't know, like Hell's Kitchen type of show or something. Like I was like, it's, you want me to go star on like my favorite reality TV show? Like what is the chances? Like I don't really watch Survivor. I don't watch anything. Like literally Big Brother was it. And it was like my secret too. Like I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> like um, It was like my big guilty pleasure and it just worked out. So it was amazing. It was one of the reasons too why, of course, like I had to say yes, uh, because as a scientist, I hadn't, um, not as a scientist, but as somebody who wanted to grow up to be a scientist, I had never seen any women scientists, literally. It was until I was the age of 21 and I had worked in a lab and I finally found a women scientist. I had no role models. Like I was like, I want to do this, but like I just kept seeing men. And then if you think about like, science and uh tv it was like phil nye the science guy like you just couldn't think of like a woman that was doing it and now of course years later it's interesting because i think i sort of broke the mold after i started um in other countries they started having scientists they even had like rachel riley on my show uh the season after me who was like not quite as science <laughs> hard science as me but she was still science like interested and things like that and then on these other shows they started having women scientists, male scientists. But up until that point, like if you watch a TV show, there was no CSI with like women scientists, like it was always men. And so when I went on the show uh, afterwards, I got all these like letters and emails and things like that from mothers and young women that were like, oh my God, I want to grow up to be a scientist like you. This is so cool. I drew a picture of you. <laughs> like I'm like, this is so fun. Um, and I got to do a lot of speaking and a lot of mentoring of a young women. And that was really important to me because it's so hard to actually become the person you want to be if you've never seen it in real life. And if I've inspired a couple women to be like rocket scientists or brain scientists or whatever kind of scientists they want to be, or at least even learn, like realize that it's okay to like play around and experiment with microscopes. And if other people call you a dork, it's super okay because dorks are awesome. So, you know, like that to me was more important than even my time on there. The fact that I changed people's lives for the better.
um, as a, a scientist, I'm always consuming information, reading, studying, learning, like I'm a lifelong learner. And for me, I didn't realize how damaging it would be almost to not have any new information. I felt like my IQ like <laughs> literally went down like 20 notches in the house just because you're not reading. And, you know, and then it's a lot of gossip and stuff that I'm not used to consuming. Like, I feel like that's like negative energy stuff. Sometimes I'm, I try to, you know, be, stay positive, especially because I work with a lot of patients and things now, but like, I can't believe that I spent two and a half months not thinking like in that way and, and, you know, doing a lot more of like emotional intelligence type of stuff, but it was still, it's, again, it's, it's emotional intelligence to be in the house, but you're also like in a game. It's very weird. So like my brain was operating in a very different way than it normally is. And for me, you know, to even go back to work, it almost needed, like, I needed like almost therapy to like become a functioning human at my job again. Um, which it was a little weird. I was just like, I feel really dumb, like really, really dumb. This is weird. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, again, it's, you know, reality TV and that, that atmosphere. And I think particularly my cast was not the most intelligent cast. Although, um, I, I watched almost every season now and, uh, you know, I don't think any of the cast are, you know, known for their, <laughs> their IQ. They always have, uh, some interesting characters, but, I just wish I would have had like somebody else like at my level to, to, you know, talk at least through that, that season. Memory of course is those things that you would never happen to you in real life. And there was this moment where Kevin, uh, open the Pandora's box and $10,000 in dollar bills just rain from the sky. And like, I'm literally sitting there sun tanning. There's a couple other people in the backyard. And I was like, there's money coming up from the sky. And they're like, Oh my God, like did a, did a plane crash or something. And I'm like, I'm going to go grab this money. And I'm like, I'm getting a garbage can and like getting all the money. And it was hilarious because they didn't tell us what was going on. And it was just literally, if you grab the cash, you want it. Like that was it. <laughs> and so I, of course, got the most cash because I'm like, I don't know if there's dollar bills raining and I'm not stripping like, oh, hell yeah, I'm getting that money. I'm sorry. Like it was hilarious. And so I got all, like, I got like, I don't know, two and a half or $3,000 in, in dollar bills, which is funny. But uh, <laughs> like, that was just the, the moment just looking up and going, what in the world? And that's really Big Brother's all about expect the unexpected. And literally, you would wake up and you had no idea what the next day would have, you know, the next second would have, you know, you could be eliminated the next day, like you could win things like it was so crazy. And to me, another great moment. Um, and one that I, you know, once I finished the season, I was so grateful that I made this choice. And I know a lot of people on the show wouldn't have made this choice is um, on uh, the third week when I was actually put up as a quote unquote pawn by Jesse Gatters, uh, but I was actually supposed to go home. I actually won a TV prize in one of the veto competitions. And I threw it back in because I knew that if I um, had won and I didn't win the veto that I was going home despite them telling me I wasn't. And so I threw away the big prize and um, I ended up winning the veto in that competition. I saved myself. I didn't go home third. Instead, I placed fourth in the whole show and I lasted despite everyone trying to get me out every, every single week. Um, so, you know, there's these, these choices that you make in life that do impact, right? Do you want short-term rewards? Do you want the TV? <laughs> do you want to win? And um, I've tried to use that kind of um, insight my whole life. You know, it, there's a lot of things that I've done, a lot of things that I've built, you know, like writing 400 page books. That's not something that's an overnight <laughs> win, but you know, it's like the most important things in life are not short term, um, you know, wins. So I was really proud of my decision there. It showed a lot of restraint, even though like, it was like, I was like, literally, I was like, my husband's going to kill me. I just threw away a TV. And I was like, no, you want to win the money. <laughs> Do that. So um, the whole Michelle is evil pinned on me thing was something that was devised by Shima, Kevin, and Natalie, who hilariously were the evil people in the house. So what people didn't see and what people should know, because Kevin is on the, the Big Brother All-Star season now, is that Kevin is a horrible person who put, chlor uh, he tried to put bleach in my contact solution. He helped throw out my wedding ring. 
Uh, he tried to put red dye in my food. Um, I have a deadly allergy to it. Literally, he had to be told by production over and over again, they can't murder me in the house. Like literally since day one. Like I literally had a team of people who thought that they couldn't, they, she wins all the comps. Like I literally won the most comps in, in Big Brother 11. So they couldn't beat me because they all sucked at competitions. So the only way they could beat me is by murdering me or getting me to self evict which is disgusting, horrible behavior. And, you know, to be honest, when you realize that the people had done that to you, would you ever talk to people who try to kill you? Like, no, hell no. I tried, I tried to be nice and be like, oh, I'm gonna forgive you people. But guess what? There's still those people. The only people in the house that I like, again, I try to have a relationship with like Jeff and Jordan, they backstabbed me and I was loyal to them to the end. Like they just, you know, they, they went on this sort of like that winner's path, which is a little bit different when you have like the tiers of like reality stars or like the ones that are like invited back and the ones that aren't. So like whatever they did their thing. But uh, in terms of who I still talk to really it's Ronnie. I love Ronnie. It was funny because we didn't get along the house, but he's a real person. Um, he's, you know, he's authentic. Yes, he was a liar on the show, but like, he's a teacher. He's a really nice guy. He's a beautiful son now. Like I love his wife, like good people. Um, but like looking at Kevin, right? Like I'm so angry that Kevin got picked and then people are like, Oh yeah, he's great. Like he was this great player. I was like, he wasn't, he just like stumbled into, um, you know, his finish to be honest. Um, and I was really broken by the time like he beat me like right at the end. I mean, I had been on four weeks of slop. I like literally every second of my life was like spent guarding my medication or my belongings. They stole a bunch of stuff from me. They threw out my medication. Like I was like, literally like I was like a torture victim by the end. And as far as the history of big brother goes, I'm probably the worst a treated person that's ever lived in the house, which is disturbing to be honest, because I work in therapy. <laughs> so I'm like, how are these people even allowed to do this? I was really angry that that production did that. But watching it now, I am so happy. I'm like, please, Kevin, please get voted out every week. And everyone's like, aren't you supposed to be rooting for him? I was like, no, I hope he did. I know he's never going to talk to me again. I hope he reads the things that I, I posted because you know what? He doesn't feel an ounce of guilt for the things he did in the house. They threw out my birth control pills, hoping that I would get knocked up after the show and have to have an abortion. These are things that they actually said because there's actually transcripts of live feeds. I mean, like, what is wrong with people? Like, that's so sick. <laughs> that's not fun. <laughs> like, I'm just, again, I'm like, why couldn't, like, production never told me or anything? Like, I had to learn from other people and also watching, like, the live feeds and then transcripts and things like that. There were sometimes, like, one time Kevin admitted something out of guilt. Like, when Shima was evicted, he actually thought she was getting yelled at by production because she had just tried to put red dye in my, my food or something. And I was like, what? I was like, why would you even like, why would you even do that? Like, like literally, like you're telling me somebody was trying to murder me, but like no one ran up to me and be like, see another house that's trying to kill you. They're all sitting there like laughing as like, they try to murder me. I'm like, so that's like, that's the kind of stuff that happened in the house all the time. I literally was just like, I, I have no attachment to reality in here. These people are so weird. And like, I'm like, do they, do they accept serial killers? Or like, like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> like, as a, like somebody with like a, a psychology background, I literally was like, this person has this personality disorder. This one has this one. It was funny. Big Brother actually tried when I did my personality test. They were like, you're an alcoholic. I was like, I don't even drink. Like, I was like, but they are, you're an alcoholic. I was like, okay, guys. <laughs> but uh, some of the other people, I think their tests were pretty on point. <laughs>I'm not the same person I was, uh, you know, 11 years ago. I've changed a lot. I've, I've grown uh, much more confident in my abilities. Big Brother actually let me know that I was actually a much more stronger person than I thought. Um, I was more athletic, <laughs> you know. I was very good in endurance competitions, winning things uh, like with Marines and things like that. So um, I know now that I'm strong. I'm confident that uh, I win things I'm confident um, I'm a little bit better in social game um, you know last time I was so sort of like here in the headlights because I had no idea like why people were being pitting me as like the devil and and things like that that it was you know just really hard for me to even do a social game I was like I think these people are trying to kill me and like I can't be friends with them I can't work with them like <laughs> I don't understand what to do here um, whereas in this uh, house uh, you know the competitions um, 
I'm always a beast, like no matter what, um, you know, I have a lot of different qualities um, there that, you know, just make it easy. Like I, I watched like Kesar, for example, and I'm like, here you have a guy that never wins, like Kevin never wins. Like a lot of the people that are on like never win, to be honest. And it's so frustrating because I am actually tied with Danielle, uh, with Janelle. I'm tied actually with like all the top people that have been invited back. I'm the only person who invited back that um, has won like all the, I won three POVs and an HOH. So I'm like, I'm a comp feast and the, the women's side and I haven't been invited back. And it's just frustrating to watch these people like that don't play well be on the show again. So I would kill it. Um, and knowing that I know have some relationships with some of the house guests. And it's funny because I think that I could have even had some secret alliances on the show because people don't know that I know certain people because um, I've dated people on the Big Brother cast and things like that. So like I have positive relationships that other people don't know. I didn't talk to any of these people. They don't know. They don't, I didn't put it out on like social media and things like that. So it's like I had solid relationships. So I could have literally run like secret alliances, like, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, like the renegades and things like that. Like, to be honest, it would have been fun. Right now I'm watching and I'm like been watching a little bit of live feeds and like catching up on Twitter and things like that. And it's like, I'm frustrated. The house is boring as heck. Like, I'm like, this is all stars. No one. You guys all seem to need some kind of mental health right now, which is like so sad. And also you could have thrown the therapist and like, seriously, <laughs> I've been like, Hey, let's fix your trauma right now. Like <laughs> let's fix your big brother baggage. Um, but it's just, it's boring as, as somebody who's watched how many seasons I'm like, come on. Like it's either bullying or it, there's nothing like that's the only two actions in there and it's sort of like a meanish house um similar to what it, at least in big brother 11 it was mean but it was like competitive like every single competition every single person there felt like if they didn't win like there was no one really throwing anything except natalie like people felt like if they didn't win they were going home because it was that like crazy and right here it's, it's like i feel like they've 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 picked off like a a playbook like oh you go home this way you go home that way whatever like let's just play like they're not even playing summer camp because they're not having fun like I don't know what they're doing there except collecting their checks like it really looks like they're like who cares I got forty thousand dollars or something you know during the pandemic like whatever I'm just gonna chill and it's like that's not great viewership it's not fun it's boring and and again some of them are petty and mean so they casted some mean people Um, so I was uh, a big fan of Janelle, uh, and of course, KSR as well, but I don't think he's going to make it to the end. <laughs> he's not really a good player, to be honest. <laughs> and he's older. So like, I don't think he's going to suddenly like, you know, come out as like, I wouldn't come. So like, it's not going to happen. So he's like a personal, like a, like a human favorite, but like, he's not going to win the game. Um, so in terms of who actually will, goodness, um, again, I've been a big fan of, uh, Danny De Nato, um for years again um you know her gameplay was pretty good although you know she did get some assists from you know the showmances and things like that so it's interesting in this big brother seasons these showmances obviously didn't happen because a lot of people were married or things like that and so um she's playing a different game she's playing mean game i don't particularly like that but she's doing it really well and i have to sort of respect that she hasn't crossed any lines i think like kevin you know, and Natalie and them did. So, you know, she's, she's playing a savvy game right now. If she starts winning comps, you know, towards the end when she needs to, she could win. Um, I could see that big brother and productions would want to see a Danny Donato win because she's been on it. She's gotten so close, um, but she hasn't won. And she is sort of royalty. Uh, you know, even though she's sort of like, it's funny when you compare Janelle and Danny Donato, it's sort of like you have like, <laughs> like Linda versus like the Wicked Witch, and like literally, and it's so funny, but like, she could win. And, um, but there's also the problem that there's a lot of strong men in the house, and they've gotten three women out in a row. Um, so we could have instead, she gets the end, she gets knocked off like in fourth place, like Brittany did with the brigade. And then you have like the three bros make it to the end. So I would like to see Danny win. I think she's going to get picked off. Um, it's, it's really hard to sort of play for yourself. Um, like I did, like you, you can only get so far. Like if you miss one question, like your, your, your season's done, you know? So um, I think that actually somebody like Enzo will probably win. So uh, 
Um, in terms of getting on, right, again, um, I haven't gone through the, the, the entire process for Big Brother, but I have for other um, shows that I ended up um, being on. And so I would say this, you know, um, be the version of yourself that you are at home, like with your family or your friends, um, you know, because they want to see the real you because, you know, your mask drops off after you're there for like two days, you know, you get used to the cameras and they get to see who you are. They get to see who you are when you're mad, when somebody steals your food, like when somebody's rude to you, like that's who they're going to see in, in the house all the time. They're not going to see the best version of you. They're actually going to see probably the worst version of you most of the time. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, who are you when, you know, um, like, what are you passionate about? What are you feisty about? Like, what are your buttons are? Know yourself, show yourself. Um, and they'll be like, oh my God, I'm like this princess. I'm like the best person in the world. Like I have nothing is wrong with me. Like, I'm so nice. Like, it's just like, we're all different shades of, you know, wrong and baggage and things like that. And Big Brother does bring it all out in you, but like show that you are competitive. Show that, you know, like you do, again, there's like a weird balance between, they like sometimes super fans, but they're not always that interesting on the show. But like show that like, you want to compete. That was me. When I went on there, I was just like, I, I'm a big fan, but like, I want to crush it. I'm a Jersey girl. Like I'm going to be like a beast. And if people get into my business, I'm going to like scream at them. By the way, I did the opposite. When people like got in my face, I went like clean the toilet. Like, but like when I, I was, I'm actually much more normally feisty and it was sort of weird. It was just like, you're also trying to compete for money. So it's like a weird thing. I was like the Jersey girl way. But like, I let them know, like, I'm a scientist. And this is who I am, like, in my real life, like professional life, but this is who I am at home. And it's probably not someone you're expecting, right? Like, it's always like, who are you? And what makes you interesting? There's, you know, 1000s of bartenders in the world, there's 1000s of pilots or 1000s of like, you know, like, whatever your occupation is, but like, why? What's interesting about you? oh, you're like, you know, you're this profession, but you bake pies at home. Like that's totally unexpected. It was like, whatever it is that makes you a little funny for me. It was, um, when it came down to final casting, like they literally have a version of you, like they pick between two of you. It's like, there was me and there was another nerd and I won't go into the specifics of like, but she was like a musician. Like she played the violin or something. Like it was just like, I could tell she was going to be my slot. It was fine. Like, the CEO of like CBS had to pick between like which one was going on. And I was like, holy crap, that's me. But like a different kind of me. And I was like, which one are they going to go for? And I was like, I think they should go for, for the saucy nerd. That's like not what you expected, but is, you know, the complete package versus like the typical nerd that's going to like, you know, fade into the wallpaper. And that's what happened. You know, they were just like, you're, you're unexpected. And I was like, yeah, but I'm here to break boundaries and I'm here to break other people and win the game. So, you know, rather than being the person that's like Nicole, like Nicole A, you know, played a, a better game in her previous season, but like she was just sort of pathetic in this one. And that I feel like the person that they could have cast it could have been like that. And so they have to make these casting choices. Be the person that they remember that they think is going to be interesting, um, that they don't think is going to be broken in the house because nobody wants to watch a sad, pathetic person who's under their covers and crying all the time. And this season we get a lot of that and it's just shameful. I was bullied in the house and I was bullied outside of the house. So um, it was really weird. So, you know, I'll talk about the more positive experience. Um, so I was in Pasadena where uh, uh, California Institute of Technology is. It's a really small town. Um, I was uh, a postdoc there. So I was a research scientist there. And it, because it was a small town, everyone knew I was on the show. People are so weird. I went to the grocery store. People were like hiding behind like columns and like taking pictures of me instead of talking to me. And I was like, hey, I'm cool. I'm a normal person. You can talk to me. And people were just weird beyond anything. And it, it was awful. And so I was like, I think I need to move. <laughs> like, this is weird. And by the way, it's funny because Pasadena is like literally 45 minutes away from Hollywood. But it's like, it's very, it's not Hollywood. Like there's not actors there and things like that. And so people there were so weird. And um, I ended up moving actually to LA um, and everyone is famous there. And it's like, I don't consider myself famous. I'm like ZZZ like, but at the time, you know, we were sort of hot because we had just been on a show and things like that, but it was like normal. And also it was cool. Like, it was like, oh, it's not weird. Like no one's trying to stalk me at the grocery store. Like it was, so I was able to just live my life by moving to LA. But the other thing that happened was um, 
while I was on the show, um, I was actually trying to sell my house and uh, go through the process of divorcing my first husband. And the thing was, it didn't mesh with the story that I had when I applied to this show, which was like, I love my husband and we're going to go buy a house. And, the, and so um, a lot of the viewers got really angry because they thought I was like this wholesome, like wifey who's going to have like 10 kids in our house and this and that. And in fact, like, my husband and I we were like, we were done before Big Brother. It was just like, it made, it was like the nail in the coffin because it gave me time to really process. This is not, this is not what I want from life. This wasn't the right per partner. I, I married my college sweetheart, but like, we're not right for each other at all. And um, after the show, I filed for doors and everyone's like, she got famous and she left her husband. She's crazy. And like, even the other house guests right now on Big Brother All-Stars are like, Michelle went into a downward spiral after Big Brother. I was like, I, what? I wrote five books. I got an MBA. Like, I'm, I teach all over the world. Like, because I, I ditched my first husband, like, I, I went into a downward spiral. Like, you don't know anything about me. And so th the problem is that's the narrative that went online. Oh my God, she like posed for Playboy. She's crazy. I was just like, I'm an empowered woman. There's lots of celebs that have, like, who cares, right? Um, so for me, um, the negative attention I got after the show was just, uh, it was actually a little damaging to me, to be honest, um, you know, and you want to be like, like, there was a part, again, it was like, there were people that were like, yes, you're the first scientist on TV, like, I adore you. And then there was other people who were like, you let me down, you're a horrible person, you're not a good Christian, and I'm like, you'll never be Jordan. And I was like, oh, because that, that was my goal in life, to be Jordan, like, thank you, I don't, <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. If you don't think I'm Jordan, that's okay. Um, but you know, harboring that there's still people that are like, are you traumatized from your time on the show? I was like, no, I mean, I'm a pretty strong, tough cookie. You know, if people hated me inside the house, great. You know, I would have liked to maybe have been on a cast where people were more friendly towards each other, you know, after the show, but that didn't happen. It's okay. Um, but everything that happens in life, you know, just makes you stronger. Um, I don't, you know, the one, the one thing that I'm still annoyed at today is that there still are forums where people are like, obviously like screenshotting my uh, social posts and like saying things like, oh, you know, this person she married is ugly or people calling my job to try to get me fired. Like that still happens. And I'm like, these people are like fatal attraction weirdos. Like, I'm like, I don't know why Big Brother, like, is the only show that tends to do that. Like, it's not like people on like The Bachelor, The Bachelorette are like, 11 years later, somebody's still like trying to destroy my life. There's literally like a website and a group of people who are like, we will make sure Michelle Noonan is actually taken down for life. And I'm like, get a life, get a life, you know, but, um, you know, there's only so much you can do. I, I, I wish I had a little bit of knowledge that that's the kind of stuff you deal with when you go on reality TV show. Like I honestly wish that they would have had like a therapy session be like, okay, this is how you deal with stalkers or this is how you deal with angry people, like, or, or like, you know, like self image, like this is something that, you know, big time celebs deal with, right? Like when they read like mean tweets or things like that, you know, and it's like, you shouldn't care sometimes, but you do care. And like, to me, every single day I get and read at least like, there's at least 10 like social media posts out there saying that I'm a porn star. And I'm like, I'm not a porn star. And I'm like, why do I care that I have to correct these people that I'm not a porn star? Like, what does it matter? And I'm like, well, I don't like it when people say things that aren't true about me, but it's just like, it still happens like every single day. And they're like, you're not. I'm like, yeah, guys, I'm not. <laughs>
not all drugs, um, but ones that help with uh, healing trauma and pain. And so cannabis, um, also known as medical marijuana, has so many different applications now. It wasn't, you know, as widely accepted maybe 10 years ago, but now it is. Um, and it's, you know, legal in about 30 states and many countries um, in the United States. But what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, I counsel patients uh, about, you know, the benefits of cannabis and choosing the right products and the right dosing so that they can help. Um, you know, heal, you know, chronic pain or anxiety, depression. I work with veterans with PTSD. So I've had a very fulfilling life. And even during COVID where I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, my life just like stopped. Um, I do telehealth. So it's just like over Zoom, like I'm able to talk to people around the world, which is really exciting. Um, and I've also developed online courses. Um, and I've built different businesses and advised different businesses. And like one of the most exciting things that I'm working on right now, I'm going to be uh, launching a curated marketplace for mushroom products. So medicinal mushroom products, because the psychedelic ones aren't legal yet in the United States, they are sort of in Canada, but you know, um, that's for, for another day. But like, I'm really excited to be launching mushroom MD. Um, because again, it's the, these tools, right? Like there's so many herbs and like so many things that have had some stigma attached to them that people aren't using properly, but change your life. Like I got sick after Big Brother. We didn't even touch on that at all. But I was actually so sick. I was bedridden. I was in the hospitals all the time. I ended up in a wheelchair. And cannabis and medicinal and psychedelic mushrooms are the things that rewired my brain, helped me heal, helped me get out of a wheelchair and got my life back together again. And so my story, my personal story is funny because it usually doesn't even include Big Brother. It's literally my story is about me healing from something that they told me I would be on disability and never be able to work again to actually functioning at the same level that I did and living my best life. And encouraging people to not go down that spiral of prescription drugs and depression and things like that thing you know with that label i'm a sick person you don't have to be a sick person you can be an awesome person living with a chronic disease you know because of plant medicine so that's what i do every single day i know it's shocking for some people because they're just like she does the marijuana so i was like oh that's right i did go down a downward spiral no um I use medicine every single day to help people and it's it's a joy you know um and sometimes i talk to fans it's sort of still funny where i'm like talk to a patient i'm like let's get back to the cannabis not big brother <laughs> but uh you know i really love my work thank you for watching the sarah scoop show head to sarahscoop.com for more